Hello everyone and welcome to Oakman High School. It's Gordo Game Week here on Go Wildcats with Coach Ryan Hall. All right, it is game week. Game number one on the schedule for the Oakland Wildcats. Coach, tell us what we're looking forward to this coming Friday night. Yeah, it's a, a big matchup, one that we're excited about. And, you know, we, we always want to try to play teams that'll challenge us, and Gordo will certainly do that. One of the, the better teams in North Alabama and team that, you know, we're trying to aspire to become, that, you know, their standard. And so we're excited about that opportunity to go down and play um, at Gordo, um, new turf field. Uh, defending 4A runner-up, uh, you know, if, if you can't get excited about that, that's kind of, you know, you, you, you're in the wrong deal. So we're excited. Very good. So this coming Friday night, August the 20th, begins at 7 o'clock p.m. And fans, we need to know this, that ticketing is done completely through the GoFan app. So be sure that you have that app. Contact us here at the school if you need that assistance of getting that worked out. Um, Coach, let's talk about just kind of some specifics who should we be kind of keeping an eye on in terms of Gordo players yeah well look uh, just offensively for Gordo obviously their quarterback Tanner Bailey number two is a tremendous prospect um, and, and then they're running back 25 uh, Rayshon Williams is a kid that I think will be a college guy he's just a junior um, so uh, they're really excited about him and then defensively um, number 55 I think number 62 um, they got a big nose tackle I think his name's like Kelton Bird um, he's going to be 6'2", 300-pounder that can play, moves better than you think. Um, and then they have several guys. 17 is uh, the Caps kid, 13 the Neil kid. A lot of just good, really solid uh, football players on that side of the ball. All right. I know your emphasis is on your team, though. you got to scout the other team, but you want to try to control your team. Tell us who you're excited to see, who we should be looking for from the Oakman side. Yeah, just a couple of things matchup-wise with Gordo that, that are really important. And, and we talk a little bit about this in our film breakdown segment. But, you know, on offense, we've got to protect. They're going to bring pressure and be real aggressive. So, you know, our front guys and Hunter Davis, Nick Hanley, Trey Thomas, uh, A.J. Odom, uh, Mike McGinnis, all those guys that, that mix in there on the offensive line will have to do a good job of picking up those those pressures. Um, and then we got to make some one-on-one -on -one plays. You know, we're going to have to have some guys in space, win some one-on-one -on -one battles. and and uh, that'll be key to the game. And then defensively, you know, I think it's going to be important kind of twofold. Um, up front, we're going to have to do some things to get pressure on him. You know, A.J. Odom and Jai Henderson and Trey Thomas down on, on the front, Hunter Davis. Those guys are going to have to do a good job of, of mixing it up and, and getting pressure on the quarterback. And we've got, to, we've got to play coverage for a long time. They're a heavy play action team, so it takes a lot of eye discipline on the back end. Um, to not get caught up in all the, the, the run action and the, the motion and things like that and, and play your, do your job, play your responsibility. So I think those things will be critical. You know, it'll be a first game for both of us, so there'll be some mistakes and some things that, you know, you just don't have time in fall camp to cover everything. So, you know, special teams will, you know, who can make, the few, make fewer mistakes in that. Uh, and then uh, who can outlast conditioning uh, always is important early on. And, and so those are kind of some of the things that I think you'll see play out over the course of that game. They're a really good football team. Okay, and, and one that, that we're going to use it as a measuring stick for us uh, and, and see where we're at because we know uh, the level that they play at. So we're excited about that opportunity. Our kids are, I know. All right, that's great. Continue watching with us today as we'll visit with Wildcat Band Director Casey Woods and also take some uh, time for Coach to break down some film from last year's Oakman Gordo game. All right, we are here in the Oakman Band Room and we're with Oakman Wildcat Director Casey Woods. Uh, Casey, thank you for taking a few moments to spend with us today. Uh, quickly tell us about you. Who are you? Uh, well, I'm Casey Woods. I've been the band director for 14 years now. And uh, here at Oakman, I'm from here. I graduated high school in 2001. And like I said, I went to Bevel State and then on to UNA and graduated with a music degree and was fortunate enough to come back home. So, Well, that's fantastic. We're glad that you did. Glad that you are here. Uh, quickly tell us about the band as a whole and, and what this program looks like kind of year-round. Okay, well, first we start off with beginning band in sixth grade and 
that's up at the middle school where I do that and seventh and eighth grade band also. And then we transition into the high school and uh, then it, we're basically creating the marching band and the concert band. And we do marching band, of course, during football season. Then we kind of transition to concert band for Christmas and the springtime. And then we also play at graduation at the end of the year. All right, that's great. Appreciate all of those good things you do across the year and helping the school and the community both. Let's talk about this year's band. How's the summer gone and, and what can we expect on the field this year from you guys? Well, the summer's gone really well. We, uh, we started practicing in June um, once a week and built up to July and after the 4th of July, we started pretty regular. And uh, we wanted to do something fun this year. After the year we had last year with COVID and not being able to do a whole lot of things, we want to do something fun. So we're starting out with I'm Still Standing by Elton John. Then we're going into Carry On My Wayward Son by Kansas. Then the drum solo is called Blaze Blues. And uh, they're doing a good job with that, the drum line is. And then we end with Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive. So that's, that's the gist of this year's show. Okay, well that's great. Certainly those are recognizable and even something we in the, fan, in oh, the yeah. stands can sing along with. So that's great. Um, all right, so we'll see you, hear you on Friday nights, but I know there are a few Saturdays in the fall that are big days for you as well. Tell us about your competitions. Well, if things go well, and you know, um, I know we're still you know, kind of fighting COVID and everything, but we're going to start uh, the competitions again. We didn't get to do that last year because of that, but uh, we're going to try to go to Haspel and Gordo at the end of October. Well, that'll be great. I wish you safety, but also great success and well, good luck you. with those. Um, and thank you again for your time today, thank you. for all that you do for the band and for the school and the community. Continued best wishes for you. Thanks so much. All right, we're going to take just a few minutes and, and kind of break some film down from last year's game with Gordo. And I'm going to kind of share some things that they do on offense uh, that I think we'll have to do a good job dealing with to, to give us the best chance to win. And I'm going to show you some things they do on defense and how we We'll have to attack them to uh, be able to put up some points and move the football on them. So here, first of all, offensively, I'll tell you, it all starts with their quarterback. Tanner Bailey's going to Oregon. He's, he's, got, he's got arm talent, a very, very smart, great leader. And then he also got a tremendous running back, uh, number 25, Rayshon Williams. But one of the more difficult things that you deal with when you deal with Gordo is they're multiple in their formation. So they could be a spread team. They could compress you. They even get under center and get in the, the, the old power eye formation with a tight end and fullback. Um, but they do a great job of complementing the, their plays. And what I mean by that is things will look exactly the same, but they'll attack you with a different concept. So that's what we're going to look at here. I'm going to show you, they're going to, this is an inside zone run scheme with split action. So the running back's going to attack downhill, and this inside tight end fullback's going to go backside and kick the end. And all these linemen are going to try to zone to the left. All right, and that's just a basic zone play um, where they try to kick your backside in um, and get up inside. So you see the handoff, they kick the backside in. Watch 17 right here, this young man right here. He'll kick that backside in, boom. But what we do a great job on that play is we feel from the backside. So they get a little bit of movement up front, but we feel on the backside and make a great tackle by Trey Thomas. All right, so then all they've done here is flip the formation. Now those same three guys that were tight in there on the right, they're gonna bring that tight end across, okay? And that running back downhill. But let me show you something on that play before, before we go. Watch, when the handoff happens, their coach that's sitting up in the box, he probably told their, the, whoever's calling those plays, hey, look, there is nobody in that grass out there in the flat. Okay, so he hands it off. There's nobody out here to cover the flat. So here we go. Same look, same play, fullback comes across, but now instead of handing it off, that quarterback fakes it, and he's going to roll on a bootleg action. And the fullback now, instead of kicking the end, slips out into the flat, catches it, makes a guy miss, gets upfield for an explosive play, a 21-yard gain. So what I want to tell you about the key for us defensively against Gordo is our eye discipline and doing our job and not, not trying to do too much, okay? Because all the eye candy they present you with play action pass and motion, it all looks the same, but it's several different plays. And so we've got to do a good job of staying disciplined. Flip it over now to we're on offense. Um, and one of the things I want you to notice is how many people they have in this box area. They're going to bring as many people as they can in there and try to defend the run and bring pressure on your quarterback. And what that does now is opening you up to one-on-ones outside. So you can see here, they're all manned down on our receivers. 
They got a safety in the middle of the field. This is what you would call cover one, meaning it's man with one safety deep, and he's just like a deep center field player. On this particular play for us, we blow a protection. So we protect to the left, and we should have been protecting with this back to the right. They bring a guy free off the edge, okay, but our quarterback does a great job. And you can see out here in the flat, we've got a one-on-one, -on -one, which is what we want, okay? Does a great job of making the guy miss, getting the ball out, and our receiver goes up and makes a great play uh, on a jump ball um, and gets us a touchdown. So we'll watch it again. Bubba rolls, throws it up to Denzel Chapman. Denzel goes up, one-on-one, -on -one, makes a play. So we've got to win some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups, okay? Something else I'll show you. So now we're in a single wing situation. We're in a big set. This is all of our big people in here. And now you see Gordo has brought every guy they got on defense down in the box, all 11 of them. <laughs> they don't, they're not worried about anything deep. So a lot of people, when they talk schematic football, they think to get space and attack space, you got to spread it out. Sometimes I disagree with that. In this scenario here, you can see we've compressed everybody, but we've opened up all this space to attack back here, all this out here, and all this out here. And that's what you're going to see. If you, can, if you can get past the first level in this, get them blocked up or make a guy miss, you're going to get free for a big gain. And that's what happens. Sean Douglas takes the ball around right in. There's nobody on the back end, and it's an easy 30-yard touchdown. Let's show you a couple other things in this play just to give you an idea of what we try to do to attack them. They're very fast flow, meaning these linebackers, they, when they see people pull and movement one way, they attack that way aggressively. So we false pull a bunch of people to the left right here, and then we bring around two lead blockers um, to block the people out here on the edge. If you watch these linebackers, this group of four defensive players here, you'll see the confusing. So the ball snap, watch up here, we pull all these people, they go left, right, and then back, and it allows us to spring a big gain and a touchdown for Sean Douglas. So to close this out, let's talk about defensively, we've got to have great eye discipline. We can't get caught up in all the things going on in the backfield. We've got to play our, play our job and do our job. It's always important that each, each of the 11 players on defense do their job at a high level. Offensively, we've got to handle the pressure and win one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. And we've got to find a way in the run game to be able to create some misdirection and, and, and some explosive plays for us to be able to put points on the scoreboard. Thank you again for your time and watching. Thank you for all your support uh, this past week, and we look forward to that support the rest of the season. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at Gordo. Have the GoFan app to purchase those tickets. Coach? Yeah, I can't wait to see you in Gordo, Alabama, and go Wildcats.